if you have your Bibles, open it up to 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, we are in our series called Made, and I'm excited about what God has been doing throughout this series. If you're just here for the first time, I'll give you a little background about this series. We've been discussing about how God has made, uniquely made and wired each and every one of us, and the journey in life is to discover uh, the reason in which he's created us for. And so we're talking about the purposes that he has for us. We've been taking a look. Uh, we talked about how our, our main thing that we've He's called us to do is to uh, know him and to make him known. Last week we talked about passions. And if we can go ahead and put up that made graphic for us. Uh, this is kind of like how we've been discovering what we were made to do. So we have these three circles here. Uh, we're talking about the focus of our love, the gifts that God has given us, and the reaching the world. And as these three circles uh, overlap, we're going to discover what we were made to do. So last week, Chad talked about our passions and the focus of our love. And tonight we're going to talk about the gifts that God has given us. And the great thing about this series is this, that, you know, uh, one, I've heard this said before, is that uh, there's two important days in a, in a person's life. It's one, the day that you were bored or the day that you were made. And secondly, is the day that you discovered the reason why you were made or the day that you discovered the reason why you were born. And so throughout this series, we're going to ba basically help you discover really what God's purposes is for your life uniquely. And so First Peter chapter 4 here will be the focus of our message tonight, We're talking about spiritual gifts. Uh, so 1 Peter chapter 4, 10 to 11 in the New Living Translation says this, God has given each of you a gift. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're gifted. Given you a gift from his variety, great variety of spiritual gifts. So God has an uh, immense amount of spiritual gifts, and so he gives each person from this resources of gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Verse 11, do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Well, do it with all the energy, all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ, all the glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. And so this is going to be the premise of what we discussed tonight. So why don't you join with me as we pray. God, I just thank you, Lord, that we are in this series, Made. And we've been looking at the specific way in which you're calling us to walk that out in our lives. God, I pray that tonight you will speak to our hearts. God, reveal to us the specific gifts that you have given all of us. God, we thank you that all of us here are gifted in some way, shape, or form. God, and I pray that tonight that there will be a, a revelation but also an activation of these gifts in our lives. God, I just sense, Lord, that there's some heaviness in people's hearts. God, that they came in with some burdens, God, and... Lord, we thank you that your word says this, that we don't have to carry our burdens, that we can actually come to you and lay it at your feet. And so, Lord, even right now, God, I just pray, Lord, that there will be a releasing of whatever is on their heart, God, that they will lay it at your feet. God, that we would exchange our, our weakness for your strength. God, we would exchange our worries for faith in you. So, Lord, even now, God, I pray that you would just minister to hearts, God, and fill them with love and peace. So, Lord, we thank you that you're for us. God, we thank you that you're with us. And God, we thank you that you never call us to do something that you first haven't done yourself. So Lord, we thank you for who you are. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen and amen. Title of my message tonight is this, Use It or Lose It. Use It or Lose It. Uh, I realize that there's two kind of people in, world, in the world today, two types of people. And you, uh, many of us fall into different categories, but many of us fall into one of these categories here. There's people who like to give gifts. And there's people who like to receive gifts. And just by a show of hands, we can just participate with me, help me to see where we're at and what kind of crowd I'm working with. How many of you would say that you like to receive gifts? Just raise your hands. You're like a gift receiver. All right, got some honest people. And can just let me see on the other end, uh, how many of us like to uh, give gifts? Oh, so we got 50-50, I would say. Uh, and, you know, I typically we do both. We fall into... Uh, we do both in our lives, but we tend to have leaning more onto one of the sides. So many people like to give gifts. Uh, many people like to receive gifts. I thought I was a gift giver until I realized that a person who likes to give gifts actually puts thoughts into the gift. Uh, and my, my default for giving gifts is just gift cards, like gift cards and cash. You know what I mean? And then so I'm thinking like, you know, I give that to people. That's generous, but that's not necessarily a gift giver. Because when you are a giver of gifts, you put thought into it, right? 
You don't just like go to gift cards. Like when Christmas time comes, like you actually start to think about the person and think about what would be a good gift for them. That's, a, that's what typically describes a gift giver. And so I thought I was that until so I realized, no, I'm not really that. I'm more a receiver. Uh, I like to receive gifts. And the thing about me is this, I'm kind of a hard person to buy for, and so I receive the gift cards and the things like that because people have a hard time, Leanne is nodding her head here, Uh, they have a hard time trying to figure out what to get me. And so I started to think, man, God has been speaking to me about this recently, about, man, you should be a giver uh, because the Bible does say it's blessed to... It's more blessed to give than to receive. And so I realized, man, it's not just all about receiving, it's about giving. So I started to think about practical ways in my life where I can be a blessing to other people and just intentionally be a giver to them. And so uh, school year uh, was starting before, uh, many of us are going to school tomorrow, but uh, elementary schools went back into session a few weeks ago. And so my girlfriend is a fifth grade teacher at Kapolei Elementary. And I wanted to, you know, be and do something special for her in the first week of school. It's chaotic and different things. I helped her uh, set up her classroom. That was one way for me to uh, be a giver to her. I didn't do it myself. I rallied some of our uh, high school kids and said, hey, what are you guys doing? Come help me do something. And so we helped set up our classroom together. It was a team effort. Uh, they did all the work, and I did all the watching. So um, that was a partnership there. But I figured, man, I want to do something sweet for her uh, the first week of school. And so I started to think about things that I could do. And like I mentioned before that uh, Pinterest is a person's, like a boyfriend's best friend. Like it would really give you some ideas on how you can, you know, go above and beyond to spoil your special someone. So I was looking on Pinterest and then I saw like this cute gift idea where it's like a brown paper bag look and it kind of was like how... um, you know, you can put some stuff in there, and I wanted to send her flowers. Her favorite flowers is white lilies, and so I went to the flower shop and set that all up, and uh, you know, if you want to send flowers, you don't just go pick flowers. You go to a place that's actually good at doing that, so I went to a florist. I shared with them the vision of what I thought would work, and they kind of put that together, and I asked them this. Can you guys actually send a goodie bag with this? And they're like, oh, perfect. You can do that. So I was like, great. So I started to, I looked on Pinterest, and I saw this cute goodie bag idea. Like, most kids in elementary, they give a teacher an apple, right? And so I was like, that's lame. I'm going to one-up this. And so I saw, <laughs> I saw this thing on Pinterest where it was like uh, you, you use, like, apple decorations on a brown paper bag. And so one of the people that works in our office, she's really good at, she's gifted at, like, making things extra cute. And so I hit her up. I was like, hey, can you do me a favor? This is a life and death situation right now, okay? Uh, you can really be a, a good person here. And I kind of shared with her, and she's like, oh, I can make an apple in this cricket thing. I can cut out a cricket apple, and then I can put her uh, initial in there. I was like, that's genius. Go ahead. And so she, she cut an apple together. She put the letter D in there because her name is Deja, and so put that in there. And she kind of, like, created, like, a custom card for me with apples and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh, this is amazing. And so I got all of that. I, I didn't want to handwrite a note because I, didn't, I wanted to take it up on that. So I typed out and wrote a note and printed it, used our office facilities to be doing this kind of stuff. And so I'm at the office now. Okay, I'm at our church office. I have all of these things. And so I had a, an idea of getting a, 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 a mason jar, and I filled it with M&Ms, which is her favorite candy. So I filled that thing with peanut M&Ms. Which, by the way, it takes a lot of M&Ms to fill up a mason jar. And so I uh, filled that thing up and then uh, had a person who's at the office. I, I put it in the bag, and she's like, you're just going to put that like that? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you're not going to put, like, tissue paper in there? I was like, tissue paper? What do you use t- tissue paper? It's just that. She's like, you got to put tissue paper. So I was like, who has tissue paper? So I asked the other lady at the office. She had red tissue paper. I was, like, grabbing all these resources at our church office, putting together, like, this goodie bag, okay? And so we... We put it all together, so I had that. I got her, like, coffee because uh, she always drinks coffee in the morning. And if you're a teacher, one of your best friends is chocolate and coffee. So I got her some coffee, put all of that in the goodie bag, and then I sent it over. And on uh, the the second week of school on Monday, I'm just kind of waiting because all of that went there, you know what I mean? So I sent it to the place, and I'm just waiting for a text because, you know, you got to get a reply. for all this hard work and energy that I put into this gift because this is the first time me stepping up my game, really wanted to be a good person here, a good boyfriend. Uh, And so I'm at working out at the gym and then I I head home and then I get the text, 
you, sweetie, you, you know? <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know exactly what she said, but I just knew, like, there was a the dot, dot, dot at the end, and I just knew, like, it, it, it made her day. And then she was, like, talking about it. All the teachers were coming in, like, oh, my gosh, you got flowers. And, like, yeah, my boyfriend supports me in different things. And so, and not just with her, I won some points, but with the entire Kapole Elementary, I was voted, like, boyfriend of the year, you know what I'm saying? And the funny thing is other teachers were telling her, like, my gosh, my husband has never bought me flowers in my life. And I started to feel bad. Like, I've made other guys look bad in the process, you know what I mean? Like, I went so hard that they couldn't even match my level. <laughs> and so I kind of felt bad, but I'm, in my head, I'm just like, well, you got to step your game up, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I'm trying to help you get better. But, you know, I was thinking about this, that in my efforts to make the, great, the best gift that would really be a blessing to her, I couldn't do that on my own strength. I didn't have the natural skills and ability to do that on my own. What I did is I started to rally around people who are gifted with different things. And so the person at the office who had that cricket thing, she helped me make custom cards. The other person who had the idea of how to put it all together, there was like a collaborative team effort that went into making a great gift. And that's the same thing that goes when we're talking about spiritual gifts and that God has given each and every one of us here different gifts. And although you might have a unique gift that is different from other people, when all of these gifts come together, something beautiful happens in that moment where we see a blending of gifts and we see a blending of different talents and skills coming together. And that was God's heart when he gave, gave us all unique gifts is that he wanted us to collaborate together in a sense of community where for this gifts to really showcase, but also for him to be glorified in and through that. And so all of us here, in some way, shape, or form, is uniquely gifted by God. And that's what we're going to talk about and discover tonight. So in your notes, number one there says this, God has given us gifts that equip us for his purpose. It's not about our purpose, but it's about God's purpose. And he is the giver of the gifts. In 1 Peter chapter 4.10, what we just read earlier, he's given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to what? Serve one another. That's the essence and the purpose of the gift, is to be a blessing to other people, to serve one another. And our ultimate purpose is to know God and to make him known. But we practically do that by identifying and, and operating in the gifts that God has given us. So if the ultimate purpose of our lives is to, to know God and to make him known, the practical way in which we can display that is by activating our spiritual gifts. And so if you have a, a gift of really making people laugh, that's one of your practical ways that you can serve other people, make them laugh. Like, I like having a, a funny friend. You know what I'm saying? We all need to have a funny friend in our lives. If you have a gift of baking, how many of you know, like, when you have a down day, like, some cupcakes can cheer you up. You know what I'm saying? And not just any old cupcakes. Like, you've ever tasted really junk cupcakes? Like, it makes you more mad after you ate it. Like, I just wasted <laughs> calories on this. Uh, but really good cupcakes can actually encourage you and make you more uh, happy about life. And so when all of these gifts come together and we practically use it to serve one another, we create a greater sense of community, but also God gets glorified in and through that. So turn to your neighbor and say you're gifted. And then turn to your other neighbor who you don't like, like so much and say you're gifted too. And immediately when I'm talking about you're gifted... The, uh, the, the main thing that many of you are thinking right now is this. I'm not that gifted, though. Right? Like, I'm telling you right now you're gifted, but immediately many of you are thinking in your mind practically right now, I'm not that gifted. No, I'm not that gifted. And the reason why we think that way is because we start to compare ourselves to what we think real gifts are. And so when we, we're th talking about gifts, the major thing that comes to our mind is like stage stuff, like someone who can play an instrument, someone who can sing. We just saw people who are gifted in that lead us into the presence of God. And so we appreciate those types of gifts. Uh, we think, think about someone who can speak in front of people. We think about stage stuff. And if our gifts don't align with those stage type of things, we don't think that we're gifted. And so giftings come in all shapes and sizes, some of that means that it can be showcased on a stage and be performed that way, but that, those aren't all the gifts that we have. And what tends to happen when it comes to gift, if I tell you you have a gift to organize, that's an, a, a gift. If you have a gift to keep things organized, that's an extreme gift. How many of us who are unorganized, raise your hand. 
many of us are unorganized. And so if you have a gift to keep things organized, that is a gift from God because none of us, many of us don't actually have that type of gift. And so what happens in Hawaii especially is we start to have this false humility type of thing. We don't like to say that we're good at something. And so if someone says, oh, you can really bake, you're like, nah, 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 nah. You got to say it at least four times. You know what I'm saying? Nah, 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 nah. So we have this false humility type of thing because we think that if you actually identify with saying, yeah, I'm pretty good at, at, at baking, that's like prideful. That's arrogant. Oh, you're so cocky just because you said you can bake. Oh, who do you think you? The best baker in the world. You know, we think that. <laughs> we start to think negative thoughts and have this false humility that, nah, we can't, you know, brag about ourselves so much because of the gifts that we have. We don't want to come off arrogant and different things, but false humility on the flip side, if we don't identify that we have gifts, we're basically saying that the giver of the gift, God himself, didn't give us anything. And so by doing the flip side of that, we're not actually acknowledging the person who gave our gifts, and that's God himself. And so you, if you have a gift of something, if it's baking or if it's uh, being great at school and different things like that, we have to say, acknowledge that, but also Acknowledge the person who gave you that gift, God himself. Like, yeah, I'm a pretty good baker. Yeah, God has gifted me with the gift to bake. God has gifted me with the gift to tutor. God has gifted me, as you're going to find out a little bit later, the gift to cut hair and different things. And so false humility doesn't honor God. False humility doesn't glorify God. It actually starts to downplay who he is. And if you're still thinking that you don't have any gifts, you're basically calling God a liar because he's given all of us a gift. And what we're, our role is, and tonight what I want to hope that all of us will leave, is better identifying with these practical gifts in our lives. Because God's gift in us becomes our gift to the world. God's gift in our lives eventually become our gift to the world. And so it's important for us to acknowledge that we have gifts and start to use it to serve the world around us. Number two in your note says this, identify the gifts and activate them to serve others. So two things what we want to do is not only know that we're gifted, but we want to identify the gifts that we have. And on the flip side, we need to start to activate these gifts to serve others. Another verse that talks about gifts or in Romans chapter 12, it says this, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith God has given to you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you a leadership ability, take, responsi take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Do it gladly. And so... That verse right there broke down what we call motivational gifts. And in our Rooted class, we actually go a lot deeper into discovering this. We actually have some uh, uh, practical handouts that will help you identify these gifts. And so if you're not in our Rooted class, I want to get you and encourage you to start taking that class because it will help identify some of the gifts that you have, but also show where in the church that these gifts can actually be activated in. So our gifts are an indicator to how we can practically love God and other people. And so I want to do a quick game with us, and we're gonna, uh, I'm going to show some people on the screen, and I want you to immediately shout out what you think their gift is, okay? And so go ahead and put that first picture up. Uh, LeBron James. Uh, and so what do you feel like his gift is? Uh, basketball. Someone say wrestling. No, not wrestling. Uh, basketball. Uh, LeBron James is arguably the, the all-around best basketball player on the face of the earth. Uh, he has a combination of size and speed and ability uh, that is really, can't compare it to any other person. And he's won the championship and different things. And so immediately you see the way that he plays basketball. You can say, man, man that guy's gifted as a basketball player. How many of us like basketball? I like basketball too, but I don't have the skills and ability to perform on that type of level. And so when we're talking about gifts, sometimes there's a, a passion for us to want to do something, but we don't necessarily have the practical skills to make that a career. And so gifting some, is sometimes where those two things align can actually give you an indication of what God is calling you to do. But for LeBron James, man, that's just God has given him that talent and ability. Like, he can dunk a basketball. I can barely touch the net. So we have two different types of skills and abilities. Put up the next person. Anyone know what, he, what Drake is gifted in? 
<laughs> Someone said bars, hashtag bars. Yeah, Drake, it, I, I feel like Drake, whether you know it or not, uh, is gifted to make music. Uh, and you might be thinking, nah, he's like whack. Anytime you hear one dance coming on and you, if you don't dance when you hear that song, something's wrong with you, you know. I need a one dance. You could be like, man, I need a one dance. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so Drake has the ability to make music. And this thing about God's gift isn't just uniquely given to people of God. You see, the thing is, before we even come into a relationship with God, God has given all of us gifts. Drake is activating his gift to really make great music. Uh, some of it great, some of it maybe not. I mean, in a secular sense, he's on the, his latest album has been number one for weeks since it came out. And so he's uniquely gifted in that way. And is God being glorified through his gift, though? I wouldn't say so. But that doesn't mean he's not gifted. And so many people that we see in life are actually operating in their gift, but they're not using it to glorify God. They're many times they're using it to glorify themselves make a lot of money in different things. And so the gift isn't just to be identified and enjoyed, but it's also the primary gift. The reason for the gift is to glorify God. And so many people have gifts. You look at society today, you see a lot of different gifted people. All right, our society today is blessed with, uh, uh, God has blessed them with different gifts, but many of them haven't identified that the giver of the gift was God himself. And so they go around making themselves known rather than making God known. I'll put up the next person here, my favorite guy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. What would you say Kevin Hart's gift is? Comedy. Make people laugh, right? And he can naturally do that. He doesn't have to do much to make you laugh. Like, I remember the first time I saw him, I immediately, like, started rolling. Like, Seriously Funny was one of his famous things. And... Uh, he has a, a mom that actually raised him up in church and encouraged him to pursue comedy as a high school student. And he had a, a, a person in his life encouraging him to make that dream known in his life and a lot of opposition that he had to go. But now he's pretty much America's or the world knows him as like the most funniest man alive. And he's operating in his gift to make people laugh. And that's a gift that God has uniquely given him. And so we have all these types of gifts that we're seeing here and, and, and God has given all of them that gift. Why don't we go ahead and put this last, last picture up? Let's, what about this guy here? Anyone know who that is? You think, what is this? Is this a trick? No, I, I'm going to explain this guy to you. His name is Jake Austin, okay? He's just an ordinary guy who lives in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And what he does is he actively helps homeless people in his community. Uh, and he was doing that for a long time. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri has a, a pretty rampant homeless population, and so he dedicated his life uh, to serving them, giving them food and different things, and then this brilliant idea dropped, in, probably from heaven into his heart, where he can actually serve his community a lot better. And so uh, he bought an old truck from Craigslist for $5,000, and what he did is he turned this old beat-up truck into a mobile shower unit. And he put and installed in this truck, this beat-up truck, two shower units in there. And what they did is they connect the, the, the truck to a fire hydrant. So they go to the place where the homeless people are, and they offer them free showers. And he provides with them the soap and the utensils needed to, to serve them. And he calls this service Shower to the People. That's his way of being a blessing to the people there. And... Uh, he says this, good hygiene promotes health, fosters hope, and restores dignity to those who may have lost it. And so he took his gift to serve and to, to be a blessing to other people. And he got a, probably a heavenly idea from God to take that up to the next level. And what he wants to do is take that one truck and actually multiply that truck to have this service uh, around the continental United States. And how many know that's a gift? But it's not as profiled and high profiled as the other gifts, right? It's not as high profiled as a LeBron James who wins championships or as a Kevin Hart who travels the world uh, making people laugh in different things. He's activating his gift in a not so popular way, but it's actually making an impact in the people's lives. He's impacting homeless community. 
And so the reason why I share that is because we start to think about our lives and we start to think about what we see in social media, what we see on the TV and different things. And if we're starting to compare our gifts with other people, then you're never actually going to be having the confidence to actually start activating the gifts that you have. Because we start to minimize the gifts that we have, we're going to start to downplay what we have because on the hierarchy scale in our mind, we think those gifts are a lot higher. My gifts is, isn't so much. But it's not about the hierarchy of gifts. It's about identifying the gifts that we have and start to activate them practically in our lives. And so if Jake Austin didn't activate his gifts, how many people, homeless people, wouldn't be able to experience the blessing that would come from his life? Thousands of people probably wouldn't be able to shower and have their hygiene and different things uh, get better because of him. And so the reason why God gave him, gave him that gift is not just for himself, but to activate that to bless other people. Many of us here have gifts that aren't so obvious. That doesn't mean it's less, um, less demanding than other things. It's not as profiled in other things. It doesn't mean that it's on a lesser sense, but God wants all of us to activate what we have in our lives. And so I have some questions here that are in your notes that will help you to start to identify what God has gifted you to be. Because my goal here tonight with this message is to make it more practical that all of us here will not only have an idea of what we're gifted in, but will immediately start to activate these gifts in a practical way. So some questions that you can ask yourselves are these. What do you enjoy doing most? What do you enjoy doing most? Like what fills your cup? What are some things that you just love doing that will kind of give you a direction to see what, are you, you, what you're gifted in? How many of us like to fish? We got some fishers here. I don't like fishing. Uh, and I'll explain why. I'm not downplaying you as fishers, but fishing is basically hanging out the be at the beach all day. That's really what it is. You throw the, the, the line, and then you just cruise, like, for the rest of the day. To me, that's not fishing. Like, that's just chilling at the beach. And <laughs> so, I mean, I can do that without a pole out there. So, but many people like fish. How do you think you can, if that's something that you enjoy to do, you know that you can actually leverage that to serve other people, to actually minister to other people. Don't go fishing by yourself. Bring some friends along with you to fish, but it's not about fishing per se. It's about building that relationship with them and talking and encouraging them with God, uh, about God. A guy in my group, he loves to go fish, and he went by himself, and then he saw another guy fishing, and he went and struck up a conversation with that guy and started to hang out with that guy and talk story. And so fishing is actually a gift that God is, uh, maybe a, a passion that God has given you, but you can always leverage these passions to connect with other people, to minister to other people. So then that gift, what you enjoy doing, isn't about yourself anymore. It's about serving and ministering to other people. So leverage these things that God has given you. What do you enjoy doing? If it's baking, ask your friends if you bake good, <laughs> if you bake well. And if they say yes, then maybe that's a way for you to, to bless and serve other people. If it's fishing, working on cars, oh, let me tell you, like, how many of us love a guy, a friend that knows car stuff? Like, seriously. Because you know, like, if you take it to the actual shop, they might rip you off. They probably will rip you off, let's just say that. And so having a friend who's good with mechanics, that's the first person that you call, and that's your way for, for serving other people. So what are some things that you enjoy doing? Next question is this, what do you do that seems to have the most impact on other people? What do you do that seems to have the most impact on other people? All of us have an impact on others, whether we know it or not. We just got to ask ourselves, am I having a positive impact on other people through what I'm doing, or am, am I having a negative impact? Because all of us are impacting in some way, shape, or form, and our gifts are meant to benefit other people. So what have you done, or what do you do that other people are better because of it, other people are more impacted by that? What are, what are some things in your life that would help you discover maybe these, this is a gift that God has given you? Another question you can ask yourself is this, what do you do, what do you secretly believe you do, or you could do, but never tried? What do you secretly believe you could do, but never tried? Some of us have dreams in our minds and in our hearts that we've never actually took practical steps to accomplishing. It's a God-given dream to you, but you've kind of always downplayed it. Maybe you've talked about it to other people, and they kind of, like, disregarded that. And it's always been in the back of your head, like, wow, I could possibly do that. But you never, ever put some foot to that. That might be a, a God gift into your life, a dream that he's placed into your soul that he wants you maybe to start to take some practical steps towards. One of the things that I had in my mind for a while 
was, I'm not gifted in singing. I can barely play the guitar, but I really love music, okay? And one of the things that I wanted to do uh, was try to be more musically inclined. I auditioned for the worship team all the time. They just turned a deaf ear to me. Every time I see Jess, I start singing to her, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm just trying to, like, audition, and they don't listen to me. <clears throat> I don't know why. But uh, then this thought about, uh, maybe I can't necessarily sing a song, but maybe I can write a song. And so I would start writing and different things. And one of my, a dream in my head that I would just had, I was like, man, I'll just write a song one day that we could sing in church. And uh, that was just a thought. Uh, and then I remember doing services one time, like this, like hook as we were worshiping was in my head. And I couldn't shake it. I wrote it down on my phone. And then after service, I went and walked up to uh, one of our guys that was playing the guitar and I asked him to play some chords and I, I started to sing it to him and then we finished up that song and we ended up singing that song in church and it was just a dream for me to do that but then I put some practical steps to it never thought that we could ever sing it and we sang it in church for a season and I was just like wow God that's pretty amazing and there's some things in your mind and heart right now that you have just thought about but never put some foot to, footwork to it, towards it I want to encourage you to not only just pray about it, but just do, do something about it. If it's writing a song, write something. If it's uh, uh, starting your own company, start to write out like a, a, a plan for what that company could be. Write out a purpose statement for what that could be in your life and just put it there. And w whether it amounts to anything or not, just trust God in that process. But try to actually do something about the thing that God has placed in your heart. Another question you can ask yourself is this, what do, you, what do others say you're good at? I've heard this said before, if we have to tell people that we're good at something, we're probably not that good at it. You ever think about that? Like, if you have to tell people, I can sing, you're probably not that good of a singer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if other people come up to you and tell you you can sing, other people come up to you and tell you you're a great storyteller, other people come up to you and say, hey, the way that you make that, uh, um, make that uh, explain that to me is so clear. Like, you basically simplify that. That's a gift. And if other people have told you that, that might be an indication of a God-given gift that he's given to you. Uh, the effect that it has on other people. And so ask yourself the question, what has other people actually said that you're good at? And the reason why we need other people is sometimes we don't see ourselves correctly. We need to see ourselves through the lens of other people. And the great thing about gifts is this, is that we discover our gifts in community. We can never discover our gifts apart from community because the purpose of community is not only to discover the gifts, but to actually exercise those gifts. So community is a twofold thing. Other people can speak into your life about the things that you're good at, but it provides you an opportunity to start taking practical steps to exercise that gift in a way that benefits other people. If you like baking, bake for your small group. You know what I mean? Like start to activate that in a practical way because the gifts are always meant for other people, never for ourselves. And we can't never discover our spiritual gifts apart from community. That's why if you're here and you're not in a grace group, and you're trying to figure out your life and the things that you're gifted in, I want to encourage you to get into a grace group and not just get in a group and be a part of a group, but go weekly. That's the consistent part about being in a grace group. No, you can't just say, I go, I, I'm in a group, but going weekly actually puts you consistently around people who can be a mirror to you, but also who can start to see the gifts that God has placed in your life that maybe you're blind to. But if you go once a year, they won't have the context to know what you're good at because like, ah, uh, he's good at missing group. <laughs> he's really good at that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so this week, we're going to have that in discussion. And so if you've kind of been MIA in group, you might feel a little awkward because we're going to talk about having an opportunity for other people to speak into your life. But don't be discouraged. This is an opportunity. Ah, oh, man, I got to get back into group. And the great thing about group is this. We shouldn't, don't ever let the condemnation of not being in group for a while stop you from going back. Because we're a family here. Don't even let condemnation of not being in church for a while stop you from coming back to church. We're an open family here. And as soon as you make your way back, it's, like, it's just like you never left, okay? So get that into your mind and in your heart, that that's the kind of community that we want to have. So what have other people said that you're good at? All of these ways uh, we begin to discover the things that we're good at. And it's the most practical way. So answer these questions practically. And then do it this week so when you go to group, they will have an idea of how you can start to take some steps to working out the things that God has called us to do. And so 
I was thinking about this, you know, talking about spiritual gifts. And anytime you say something is gifted and someone is gifted, there's always going to be resistance. Because in your mind, you're not only thinking about trying to discover what you're gifted in, but you're thinking about all the reasons why you're not gifted in something. And I want to start to dispel some of these reasons uh, in our life so that we can actually be bold about the things that God has gifted us in. So one thing is this, uh, honestly, that is stopping us from activating our gifts is this. We don't know what we're good at. That's just an honest statement. You don't know what you're good at. And I want to encourage you that many of us don't see ourselves in the right lens. And so sometimes for us, it's usually hard to identify something that we're good at because it comes so naturally to us, we think other people do the same thing. And so that's the good thing about a gift is that it's so easy for you to do and because of that, it's hard for you to actually identify. Um, I do that so easy, I don't think that's a gift. No, the reason why you can do it so easy is because God has gifted you to do that. <clears throat> so if you are good at writing, you would never know that you're good at writing until someone else actually reads your writing. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't be able to say, yeah, this is an amazing piece of work, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we would think, like, ah, that's not so good. But when we show it to other people... They'll be like, oh, man, you're a great writer. Like, and so that's why community is so important because we don't see ourselves right. And so sometimes you just got to take a risk to let other people into your gift and have them speak into that. Man, I think I can bake, try these cookies. Do you think they're good? Yeah, they're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, then that will help you. Man, I don't know if I can write. I just put some thoughts here. What do you think about this? And have people speak into your life. That's an opportunity for you to really start to discover what you're good at. Other times, what's stopping us from activating our gifts is we're using it for ourselves. We're using our gifts to promote ourselves, to make money for ourselves, to make our name known rather than making God's name known and actually serving other people. So many of us right now, we're actively activating our gifts, but it has no benefit for other people because it's all about you. And so the reason why you don't want to uh, the reason why you're not necessarily seeing the benefits of the gifting because you're the only one benefiting from it. No other, no other person is actually benefiting from that. And so for you to actually start to activate your gift in a way that channels it towards God and towards other people, you're going to actually begin to see the reason why God has given you that and see the effects that God wants you to experience by being a blessing to other people. Other of us doubt the influence or the impact of our gifts. We don't see the purpose of it. Man, I'm just good at reading. Like, that's all I, I'm good. And when you start to read our bullet, bulletins, you start to see all the errors there. You know what I mean? I know some of you out there, like, you read the bulletins, like, or you see our notes, and like, oh, there's a misspelled word there. You know what I mean? Like if, and, then, and you're the only one who sees it. You know what I mean? And you think, nah, that's just a small gift. If that's your gift, like, please join our team. We need people to proofread stuff all the time. That's a gift that you can be a blessing to other people. Like Maka Ayers used to be that guy all the time for us because he would always see the errors and be like, yo, you misspelled that. I'm like, man, I triple checked that. But, you know, just if you have eyes for that, you can be a blessing in this church family because that's a great way for us to be a blessing to our community by making sure that the things that we print are actually spelled correctly. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. So that, although it's small, it actually has a big impact. Other people, we do this. We start to minimize our gifts because we compare it to other people. Like, man, we see someone who can sing like Pat on stage and be like, man, I can't sing as good as him. And so my gift of just serving isn't that great. No, don't compare your gift to other people. Um, man, comparison will always kill the activation of gift in your life. I saw this meme. Um, maybe Joey you can find it. Um, Pastor Billy talked about it last uh, service of Michael Phelps. And so many times our lives, if you have it, just go ahead and throw it up. But if you don't, don't. So many times our lives, is, instead of focusing on what God has called us to do, we start to look at other people in our lives. And this is what our lives look like. It says this, winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners. Meaning that God has given, given you a gift, but instead of focusing on the gift that he's given you, you start to compare your gift to other people, and instead of walking the race that God has called you to walk, you start to look at the other people in the other lanes and start to look at other people in the other lanes, and you're so focused on them that you actually miss out on activating the thing that's got to, that has given you in your life. Don't do the comparison, man. Comparison will always kill the dreams that God has for you in your life. Comparison will do two things. It will make you feel bad about yourself or make you feel too good about yourself. 
So comparison leads to pride in both ways. You compare yourself to other people, you think that you're better than other people because, ah, I'm better than them. And so comparison leads to pride in that sense. And on the other end, you feel like, ah, comparison, ah, I'm not as good as them. And so it leads to condemnation in your life. Don't compare. Just focus on the gift that God has given you. Activate it and trust God for the results. Gifts isn't just for us to get calculated results that feed our ego. Gifts are meant to primarily one way benefit other people. Benefit God and benefit other people. Just because you don't get the same feedback that other people get doesn't mean your gift is less than anyone else's. Just focus on your race, focus on God, and activate the thing that he's given you in your life. Comfort. Comfort is another reason why many of us aren't activating on our gifts because we're so good right where we are. So comfortable right where we're at. And we're like enjoying life right now. And for you to activate your gift actually means you're going to have to put your wants and needs on the side so that you can put the needs of others ahead of yours. Many of us don't want to do that because ultimately we're selfish. It's like, ah, comfort really means I'm more concerned about my comfort than actually being a blessing to you. So I'm putting my wants and needs above yours, and when I have time and when I get around to it, then I'll begin to activate that. No, that's not even godly by any means. I've never read a verse that says, put your needs upon, above the needs of other people. That's not a Bible verse. Actually, what the Bible says for us to do is to lay down our lives every single day. So comfort sometimes kills us from doing that. Um, I remember uh, when I first got saved, maybe about two months into my journey, uh, I was really excited growing in God, and then I went to a leadership meeting that they had, and I was just excited about God. Uh, so at this leadership meeting, they were like, hey, we want to do a beach outreach, okay? And so everyone was all excited. Yes, let's do that. That's a great idea. And so Pastor Paris at the time who was leading our college ministry. He was like, all right, who's going to be the point person for it? And then um, long story short, uh, they nominated me to do that. And I was just looking at them like, whoa, I'm just like a couple months in this thing. And you guys are giving me the responsibility to plan something like that. And so I was just kind of like thrown off. But after I started to think about it, uh, I, two things happened in my life. I was like, one, wow, they trust me enough <laughs> to plan something like this. I'm a new person. Like, they entrust me with that. I definitely felt like, wow, as an honor for me to do something like that, oh, that you would see me as worthy to do that. So I definitely took that up. But also on the flip side, it made me feel like, wow, I'm a part of this family, that I can actually start to do something. And so I planned this beach outreach. We, I went and secured the permit. Went there, uh, grabbed all the stuff that we need, put out the menu, and worked together with the team. It was a great opportunity for me to build relationships with people at the church. And so I did all of that, put it all together, and it went fairly well. And the outreach that we had actually made into the, the newspaper that, that Monday uh, because it was a Labor Day weekend, and there was, like, the news there. And so they took some pictures, and on the next day, there was actually us in the paper because of what we did. And so it ended up turning out to be a great event, and I didn't realized that I was actually gifted in doing that. I was gifted at kind of organizing different things. Fast forward years later now, uh, I started to plan conferences, plan retreats. I planned the ENC thing with our team. And so how that gift was starting as a beach outreach now. <laughs> Fast forward years later, as I was faithful with doing that, God opened doors for me to plan outreaches that many of us were a part of, that have their lives radically changed and transformed from God through that. And I'm looking back on it now, man, that was just God putting me in my lane to start to activate the gifts to serve other people. Now, if I didn't step into that moment, if I was held back by fear and said, nah, man, I'm too new to do this, I would never have had the opportunity to start to activate something. But also, I would never have the opportunity to build relationships with people in the church. And so many of us have opportunities to serve in different things, and we don't want to do that because of fear and insecurity. I want to encourage you to start to activate. Get involved. Get in the game. Start to do something. Don't sit on the bench and come to church and be a consumer. You can come as a consumer, but don't stay as a consumer because what God immediately wants to do is take you from a consumer to becoming a contributor where you start to serve and be a blessing to other people. So all of that happens as we begin to activate our gifts. Another thing that happened is um, I was in group, I was leading group, and people were saying, man, you have a great way of making complex things sound so simple. And I was like, man, I don't know, it just makes sense in my head. I didn't think it was a gift by any means, and people would say, hey, um, man, yeah, you, 
they were talking about me being a pastor and different things like that. And I was just always like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and so I had this opportunity. Pastor Billy told me, like, hey, can you start to uh, do the welcome for our service? And we had a Sunday night service at Momilani Elementary. And, uh, and so I was like, all right, I'll do it. And so I practiced and I rehearsed for this thing. Like, it was no joke, okay? And for a five-minute welcome, I was, like, so pumped up to do it and nervous at the same time. How many of you know that public speaking is the number one fear in most people, next to death and dying? Because <laughs> sometimes you die because you're in front of people because that's just a crazy thing. So public speaking, so I went up to do uh, the welcome. I was so nervous, okay? Let me tell you how bad this thing was. Uh, I ha we had an Ohana card back in the day, and I was talking about the Ohana card. I was so nervous that my hand was uncontrollably shaking while I'm talking. So I'm like, hey, welcome to Grace Bible Church Pro Side. And my hand, I couldn't stop it. I was like, stop shaking. And it was like, I'm going to keep shaking. And I couldn't stop it. Like, if even I tried, and I, I, everyone was laughing at me. And I remember getting off the stage and feeling such like a failure. I was like, man, I'm never doing that again. I'm never going to speak into, in front of other people. And uh, they probably saw some potential in me because I would never put me back up. But they just said, no, you just... You just need more reps. Uh, and so it wasn't a gift at first, but I started to activate that. I was like, all right, if you're going to keep giving me opportunities to do this, I'm going to work at it. So what I would do, let me tell you, I would practice speaking in front of the mirror all the time. Like I would be at work, working with my dad and be like, rehearsing in my head a script that I would share at welcomes for church. I'd be like, hey, welcome to Grace Bible Church Pro Sub. We're so thankful that you guys are with us. Like I'll be practicing by myself because I realized that if this is something that God has given me, I need to develop it. And so I would practice, I would rehearse, and then um, I would be so rehearsed that people were like, you sound so rebo robotic up there, because I'd be like, hey, welcome to Grace Bible Church Pro Side. Wasn't that a great message? Ha, ha, ha. Like, it was so rehearsed. Like, even my jokes were planned out. Like, all right, that would be a good joke. And then, like, I delivered it as, like, a robot, and people, like, just saw that it was robotic, but I took it seriously. I was like, man, I started reading books on how to be a communicator and started to develop this gift, and slowly but surely, I started to grow in it. And then when I was at the School of Ministry, uh, School of World Missions in the Philippines, we had, like, a preaching competition, okay? And it was just for a, a a seven-minute message, and I stressed out so hard about this thing. Like, I put my heart, soul into a seven-minute message, and I crafted it and different things, and I was praying about it. I rehearsed that bad boy nonstop, and then I preached it. It went well, and at the end of the school year, they had some awards that they were giving out to different people, and when it came to the award, I didn't even know they had an award. They called it the Best Preacher Award. I ended up winning the Best Preacher Award. And I was like, at this moment, I never thought that I could speak. But it was just like, it wasn't the award for the award's sake, but it was like God saying that, now nah, this is something that I want you to start to activate in. And so really what it became is an opportunity for me to realize that because it was a gift, I needed to develop it. Some of us have gifts right now that are at infant stages that we need to start to activate to develop in our lives. And so be, because of that, we need to start to grow in it, start to do things, to exercise it, but we're all gifted in some way, shape, or form. I want to introduce you tonight to a person who has practically been given a gift, and his road to discovering this gift is pretty interesting and unique. So why don't you help me to this, uh, as we discuss his gifting, uh, Ramsey Machado. Why don't you come to the stage? <laughs> So Ramsey is a graduate of Farrington High School, uh, and uh, he has a unique journey here. Why don't you sit down, Ramsey? And so uh, Ramsey cuts hair, uh, and he cuts hair for a living. He cut my hair today. Uh, but your journey to discovering this was pretty unique. Tell us how you even got involved with cutting hair. Um, back in high school, uh, I hated to cut my hair at a barbershop. So, um, Whenever I got the chance, I would line myself up, and uh, through that, I think my friends were able to uh, notice that I was doing my own lineup, so they asked me if I could do theirs, which I did, uh, but it was only a select few, of friend, uh, few friends, you know. Um, they actually considered that I do it as a career, but I used to get offended. I don't know why. 
Uh, I told them that I would never touch people's hairs for the rest of my life. And, but yeah, that was how I pretty much started. And then you graduate high school, weren't really doing much with your life, and then you had an encounter with someone that kind of led you back into cutting hair. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so after high school, I didn't really have any uh, plans for my life. Uh, no dreams, no aspirations. Uh, it was really tough. Like, I really felt like a disappointment to my family. Um, but I ran into an old friend of mine who I used to cut, and he asked me, you know, like, cut my hair. You know, cut my hair, I'll pay you. So I was just like, shoot, I'll do it. <laughs> so I ended up cutting his hair. Um, ended up purchasing my first uh, clippers, my first set, and decided to post pictures online of cuts I did, designs I did, and through that I was able to just gain a few clients. And so you actually, after that first cut, you went online, bought really good clippers, yeah. and took it seriously, yeah. started cutting hair. No formal training by any no, means. No, no. Uh, it's just something that you started to activate, grow, and get better at, and then as you started doing that, uh, you were working part-time at a barber shop, helping out someone yes, there, yes. and then they're teaching you, equipping you in different things. And so it became something that you're going in, yeah. but your motivation wasn't cutting hair. It was actually making money. Yeah. So an opportunity came up that actually got you off track. So tell us about that. So uh, like I was saying, my motivation was money, uh, you know, just money. And um, I was offered a graphic design job full time. So I knew that paid more. So I was just like, I'm there, like, hire me. And, um, but even though I was doing that, I was not happy. Like, I wasn't happy. Like, I knew cutting hair was something I wanted to do. But yeah. And so you were doing that. You would actually work long hours at that job, feel exhausted, and then you would work part-time cutting hair on the weekends. Yeah. And you would spend all day cutting hair, but you left, you were more rejuvenated when you did that. Yeah. And yeah. so that was kind of an idea, like, man, maybe this is something to pursue. You get saved growing in your relationship with God, and he starts to bring uh, revelation to you about these gifts that you had in your life. And so an area that you had a gifting in was cutting hair. And so you're growing, trying to figure it out. Then you go recently on a trip to Thailand for a mission trip. Yes. And God did something <laughs> supernatural in your life there, decided to speak to you about really pursuing uh, what was once a passion for cutting hair, now really going at it full time. So tell us about this journey. So uh, upon coming back from Thailand, um, I really wanted to uh, be used by God more. So um, when I came back, the first thing I wanted to, like, I don't know, it just came to me that, you know, that, like, I wanted to get back into cutting, do something that I'm passionate about, something that I was gifted in. And when I came back, just so happened, my boss, who I worked part-time for, opened up a new station and offered me a full-time job cutting hair. So um, just, yeah, so I just took that opportunity, even though it was really hard. Um, but I knew in my heart money was not the motive anymore. It was actually to minister to people. And yes. you've actually leveraged uh, cu cutting hair to get people closer to God. Tell us about some of the things that you did as an attempt to get people closer to God. So um, what I did with my friends was offer free cuts to, to anyone who came with me to service. <laughs> he was like, hey, I'll cut your hair for free, yes. but you got to come with me to yeah. service. Exactly. And a lot of people came to church because of this. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a ton of people came to our Thursday night outreach that you yeah. brought from ministering to cutting hair. And Basically, when a person's in a chair, you have their undivided attention for 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes, minutes yep. Uh, well, twofold because, one, they don't want you to mess up their hair. <laughs> and, and, and two, a lot of people come in with stories and different things, and you leverage that opportunity to talk about God. You're not afraid to talk about your faith. And in an environment where uh, people come to, to look good, you ultimately want them to leave feeling better, too. Yes. And so God has kind of dropped that seed into your heart, opened up an opportunity, and let's dream together. Let's see if God continues to use this in your life to glorify Him and to be a blessing to other people. What maybe, what you would dream that God would do maybe within the next five to ten years using this passion and gift to cut hair? I mean, 
for me, I just like it's it's just an awesome opportunity. You know, they're stuck in my ch chair for 20 to 30 minutes, so they're gonna listen. <laughs> and like, um, you know, for the future, um, like right now, I just know that God wants me to do this right now, and I don't know where it would go, but I'm hoping that you know it could possibly lead to me opening up my own shop where people could come in. Um, and it'll be just a different atmosphere, you know? Just, uh, they could not only leave looking good, but leave feeling good, you know, as well, so. If you could encourage us with a parting shot tonight from your journey, and man, it was a random discovery. You never discovered this on your own. Other people said it about you, and you, God has been cultivating that in you. What would you encourage all of us here tonight from your journey and discovering just this gift of cutting hair? Um, I mean, for me, I, I didn't know that I'd be, you know, gifted in cutting hair. So I guess for all of us, it's just really, really noticing our gifts, you know. It could be something we do every day, but not even take it as a gift. So it's really just digging deep and finding it, activating it, and just using it for God. How about a hand for Ramsey? Sharing his life. As the worship team comes up, um, all of us have a journey. All of us are at this place. And the reason why I love his story so much is that, man, it was, it was a natural journey for him to discover this. Other people spoke it over him. He didn't think he was good at it. Started to activate it, got good, got better. Uh, and then just God started to open doors, and he leveraged that to bring people to church. And all of us have different things in our lives. But as we come to a close, last point in your notes is this. As we are faithful with what we are given, God will entrust us with more. So what is your gift? Is it hair like Ramsey? Is it uh, organizing, photography? Is it art? Is it planning? Is it teaching? What are you gifted in? Begin to activate that now. There's a story that Jesus shared about uh, three guys, uh, a master who had three workers. And these three workers, the master was going away on a long journey and he gave them all uh, talents, which is basically a large sum of money. To one guy he gave five, to one guy he gave two, and to one guy he gave one. The, the five and the two uh, immediately put to work these talents, invested it, put hard work and effort into it, and doubled their investment. The last guy was so afraid, was a little bit timid, kind of overcalculated, didn't want to be a disappointment, didn't want to fail. And so instead of doing something with his gift, his talent, he just buried it. And then the master came back from his journey and wanted to see what was done with what was given to them. First two guys, great. The master said, I'm going to give you uh, in charge of more things. Come to the last guy. He's like, man, I was kind of afraid. I didn't do anything with it. And what the master said is this, man, you're a wicked servant. Why didn't you do with anything? You could have at least invested it, put it in the bank, get some interest on that. But you didn't do anything with it away from me. And many of us are gifted in our lives. God is gifted in all of us, but we need to start to activate that and do something with it. If we bury our gifts and just put it aside and just kind of disregard it, God doesn't get glorified with that. And the reason why Jesus gets so angry when we don't activate our gifts, because he was a gift himself. When he walked the face of this earth, what he did is he had a lot of gifts. He was actually the fulfillment of gifts. And he used it to serve other people. He had a gift of healing, so he healed people. He had a gift to serve, so he served people. And then his life actually became the ultimate gift when he died on the cross for us. And so if he's giving all of us a gift, he's basically looking to see what we're going to do with our lives. What we're going to do with the gift that he has given us, all of us in our lives, what we're going to do with it. If we don't do anything with it, he doesn't get glorified in our lives. So all of us here have an opportunity to activate to begin to do something and my encouragement for all of you tonight is do something if you leave with anything just do something begin to trust god and do something thanks for joining us visit our website at pearlside.org for more